Everybody say, money, 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 money. money, money say, money, I need more money. I want more money. How many of you can use some more money? I know that's tripping some of you religious people up right there. But this is one of our School of Ministry videos. The subject is money. How many of you believe money matters? And what we're going to talk about on this one is receiving offerings. This is for those of you that are ministry-minded and want to be in ministry. You're going to find out this. It takes money to do it. The bad part is you don't do it for money. The good part is you don't do it for money. But it takes money to do it. It takes money for the building. It takes money for the mortgage. It takes money for the carpet. Money for the chairs. Money for the lights. Money for the airtime. Money for the cameras. Money for the staff. It takes money. More buildings. More staff. And you will always be in a position where you will need money, no matter how much you have, because your dream will grow, and God will keep expanding you. You know why? So your dependency is always on Him. Never think you have arrived, because the higher up the flagpole you go, more people see your rear end. So stay humble. But you're trusting God. And how would you receive an offering? I would have to say this because a lot of pastors tell me, they don't want to, they tell me, John, you received the offering. I don't have anointing. You have anointing for that. And I, you better get that anointing. Because offerings are mentioned more in the Bible than the word love. Love is doing Love is doing. It takes money to do it. So you have to have an unction to function. And your heart has to be right about it. Your motive has to be right. And how you receive that offering has to be in a way that's going to help the people and bring glory to God. Because guess what? It ain't your money. It belongs to God for the work of God. Well, preacher, when they left Egypt, haven't you heard the prosperity message? I preach it. When they left Egypt, do you know not a feeble person was among them? They all got healed. Someday we're going to have a healing service and we're all going to get healed. When they left Egypt, they were, and guess what? They left with so much wealth they couldn't hardly carry it. So, when you get saved, God wants you really blessed. They did leave with the wealth of the wicked. But let me inject this. The money wasn't for them. The money was to build a temple for God. So just get your facts straight. Get your motives straight. I was preaching... Apostle Paul, uh, Apostle Paul said it this way, I'll paraphrase this in, I think, Corinthians 9. And I worked with my own hands. We didn't beg you for nothing. And he said, even though we had the power, like other apostles had the power over you, if we give you spiritual food, can you not take care of our, our cardinal needs? Of course. And you take care of other apostles like that. You should do that with us too. But we're not going to beg you for it. In fact, I'll work with my own hand. You know why? Because I'm not going to hinder the gospel and I'm not going to feed your ego letting you think I'm just here for your money. So you have to understand that. Be honest. When a newborn babe or person starts coming to church, they haven't heard what you know, and you didn't know. How many of you didn't know what you know before you knew it? They have to be fed, and they have to start with milk. And then some meat, a little new wine to wash it down. So they have to be taught, because when they first come to church, and they hear you, we're receiving the tithes and the offerings and this and that, and the first, oh, that's it, that's it, they just want my money. 
I was preaching in Montana, 11 miles, I think, south of the Canadian border. 15 degrees below zero in the daytime. 40 below at night. It was right across the street from the border patrol. And they put me in a house there. And I wrote a preach. A lot of people. No pastor. I said, where's the pastor? He left. What do you mean he left? He took off. What do you mean he took off? The pastor and his brother were in gold mining. I knew this because I had been a stair quite a few times before, and he told me that him and his brother, they're in gold mining. They hit a vein. He left the church, he left the ministry, and him and his brother went after the gold, and I come up there as a minister, and ain't no pastor. He went after the gold. Went to receive an offering. A lady on the second row says this. Oh, here we go. He came for the money. I said, yes, ma'am. I left Florida, 70 degrees weather, to come here for the money. Are you serious? I said, when you leave the room tonight, go to the gas station, because it's going to be the only place open at the convenience store. Stick your tongue on that gas pump, and then tell yourself, I came for the money. Better yet, go inside and tell the lady, you hate her. You just hate her. You despise her. Tell the, tell the clerk there who left her kids to work there to make her $15 an hour so, so you can get gas at this time. Tell her you hate her because she's doing it for the money. And then try telling that to your doctor. Better yet, the next time a policeman pulls you over, tell him you're going to poke his eyes out. And you ain't signed the paper because you hate him. I said, how foolish can you do for the money? But people's mentality is that because they haven't been taught right. Most people understand it takes money to do it. The thing is, don't sneak up on them. I cannot tell you how many telethons I've done for TV stations. And when we did, we told them it was a telethon. They knew we were raising money to support Christian television. I cannot tell you how many building programs we did for other churches. We told them it's a building. They knew we were raising money to build the building. Don't sneak up on them and make believe you just feel so sorry for them and their needs. And you know, you know they have financial needs and, and you're going to help them and you're giving them all the thing. And the whole thing is you're setting them up for an offering at the end. That is deception. That's another word for gimmicks, in case you hate gimmicks. So I was doing a lot of traveling, and I'm ministering in a state. When I go places, it snowballs. Boom, boom, just one to the other. Usually when I go, a lot of pastors come and they invite me to their church. And I'm ministering in another state couple thousand miles from here in a city. The pastor really got blessed from our ministry and his people did. And he says to me, you know, I have outreaches all around. He said, I want you to come to all of my outreaches and minister to the people there too. It was a lot of rural areas. There wasn't too many cities in the state and no big cities. But there was some metropolitan areas. So he wanted me to go to all of these rural areas where he had meetings set up and he wanted me to go and minister to the people. And we planned that. The first place he wanted me to go to was another metropolitan area. And he says to me on the way that this is not my building and this is not you know my regular my meeting type of thing. He said, this is another ministry that meets there. 
And on such and such a night, they have big crowds. And he's letting me have my meeting there, and I want you to be the speaker. And then we was going to go to all the other places. Well, I go there. It's a Friday. A lot of people. A lot of people. And you feel the atmosphere. People trying to check you out. Who's this guy that was with him? Who's this guy that was with him? Who's this guy with this? And what's these stories we hear about the prophecy? And I want a word. And, you know, they're checking you out. And they don't know while they're checking you out, Holy Spirit's checking them out. A lot of people. But I felt the atmosphere was, they thought I was there. For the month. I'm paying my hotel room, so I'm paying my own gas, so I'm paying my own staff. We got bills to pay back home. We're paying for television, we're paying everything. But the atmosphere, you see, they basically, in that group, they were a bunch of rebels doing their own thing, connected to nobody in this meeting that they were having so often. And it grew and grew and grew because there's a lot of a lot of renegades out there. And they were, you know, birds of the feather. And I knew what they were thinking. So guess what I did? I really poured it on. I really poured it on for the offering. And I really stepped on some toes. I really felt the heat. Some of them, I felt the di di daggers coming out. See, he's here for the money. I knew he just wanted our money. He's here for the money. I knew they were thinking it. And I waited till their blood was about to ball out of their eyeballs. And we received the offering. And then I said, young man, you and your wife, come up here. And they did. I said, folks, you're going to get a double blessing because you thought that you was giving this money to Heartland Christian Center, my ministry. So you can get in on the blessing, but I'm going to get blessed too because I'm taking this whole offering and I'm giving it to this couple. I want to take that money. I want to feed their ego. I want to let them think that I drove 2,000 miles for their stinking money. I came there to bless them. But them thinking I was there for the money was hindering the gospel and it wasn't worth the money. I came on a mission and I wasn't going to let money, as bad as we needed it, hindered them from receiving. The couple are still friends today. They're missionaries. I didn't know them. There were missionaries in another country. They moved here now. They moved from that state to Tennessee now. We went to visit them sometimes, traveling back and forth up north. They eat, they eat. They, I don't like what they eat. They invited me for dinner and they gave me fig leaves. You know, they eat grass and weeds. And stuff. I, I, give, me, give me something to put my teeth into. But I love them. I love them. And they were so blessed. And then they sent me a letter and they told me how many hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pair of brand new shoes that they bought with that offering for the orphanages in their country. I had to kill that thing in the spirit. I wasn't there for their money. It wasn't worth it. So the walls came down. And then I was be able to tell them, you are out of order. You need to get this ministry under some kind of submission. But I was able to speak to them and correct them in love. Because I want them blessed. I want to tell them how to get blessed. And then they were able to receive from me. And guess what? We went to all those other towns and God blessed every place I went. Because we broke that thing in the spirit realm that I was not there for their money. We needed it. We deserved it. We was entitled to it. But I couldn't take it. I wouldn't, give, I wouldn't feed their ego to let them think that. 
So basically, when you're receiving an offering, be honest with the people. We're receiving an offering. Guess what we're going to talk about? Money. You talk to money about Walmart and at the gas station. And all, you talk about money all day long. And the preacher talks about money. You're going to, don't do that. It takes money to do it. But the people have to be educated and understand that. Because when they see your two Rolls Royces and your $5 million house and your pictures over here and your airplane, they get confused. So they need to be educated. All right. This is called School of Ministry, Money Matters, Part 1.